Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. A beautiful Savior, Jesus, my Lord. With my knees I bow, with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus' blood and righteousness is all my life and fullness. The finished work forever sealed for me. Oh, Jesus' blood and righteousness is all my life and fullness the finished work forever sealed for me oh, Jesus blood and righteousness is all my life and fullness the finished work forever sealed for me oh jesus blood 
and righteousness is all my life and fullness the finished work forever still for me in Jesus blood and righteousness forever my confession is the finished word forever sealed for me Jesus' blood and righteousness is all my life and fullness. The finished work forever sealed for me. It's for Jesus' blood and righteousness. Is all my life and fullness the finished work forever seen for me in Jesus' blood and righteousness forever my confession is. And of my Savior and his love for me. For Jesus' blood and righteousness is all my life and fullness. The finished word forever still for me. In Jesus' blood and righteousness forever my confession is and of my Savior and his love for me. Well, for Jesus blood bought my soul and Jesus blood made me whole and Jesus blood rescued and feed Oh Jesus blood bought my soul and Jesus blood Come! 
Savior, what a wonderful Savior, what a wonderful Savior, Jesus my Resurrection, Jesus Christ who raises up the dead, through the resurrection, my resurrection, Jesus Christ who raises up the dead, with my knees I bow, with my tongue I confess. That Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. With my knees I bow, and with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. The resurrection, you're my resurrection and my life. Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. My resurrection and my life For Jesus Christ who raises up the dead Every knee will bow And every tongue confess 
that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. Oh, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. Oh, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. The resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Jesus Christ is the almighty God. Resurrection, resurrection and my life. For Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. Resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. For oh, the resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. And with my knees I bow. With my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. With my knees I bow, with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. With my knees I bow, with my tongue I confess. Resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. The resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. The resurrection. My resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. And with my knees I bow, and with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. With my knees I bow, and with my tongue I confess. Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. Resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. My resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ who raises up. Resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. Name above every name, highly exalted above everything. The name of Jesus. Christ our Lord, Jesus the Almighty God, name above every name, name above everything, Jesus Christ our Lord, name above every name, exalted, exalted above everything. Jesus Christ, the one who is our Lord, Savior, Savior, Redeemer, the truth, 
the truth, the life, the way, Jesus, Jesus, Savior, Savior, truth, the truth, the life, and the way, name above every name, name above every name, exalted, exalted above everything. Jesus Christ, He is my Lord. Name above every name, exalted above everything. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, He is the Lord of Lords. Name above every name, exalted above everything. Jesus Christ, He is the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we praise you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and take control. Father, be glorified in the midst of your church. Exalt the name of Jesus. Glorify the mighty name, exalt the name of Jesus. will I see of your grace forever will I see of your faithfulness forever will I see of your grace forever will I see of your faithfulness forever will I see of your grace Oh, forever will I see of your faithfulness. And I will worship, oh, I will worship, but I will worship you. Oh, forever, oh, I will worship, but I will worship, oh, I will worship you.
from your faithfulness forever will I sing of your grace forever will I sing of your faithfulness oh, forever will I sing of your grace
Oh, God, we're asking you to show us how to yield, and show us how to move, show us how to yield, and show us how to move, and show us how to live our life, oh, God, in the reality of heaven in you. Lord, we pray. And I will rejoice in the Lord. Capture my heart and you rapture my soul with your glory. Oh, you capture my heart, you rapture my soul with your glory. Oh, you capture my heart, you rapture my soul with your glory. Oh, you capture my heart and you rapture my soul with your glory. Lord, you capture my heart and you rapture my soul with your glory. Lord, you capture my heart and you capture my soul with your glory. You capture my heart and you rapture my soul with your glory. And Father, we come into your house. In the multitude of your mercy. Oh, in the multitude of your mercy. Oh, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, by the new and living way. Oh, by boldness and with access. Only granted by the miracle of salvation. Only granted by the miracle of redemption. Oh, and we rejoice, oh God. Oh, and we give thanks. Oh, nothing less than the best for you, oh God. Oh, we rejoice, we rejoice in you. Oh, we rejoice in your love. We rejoice in your mercy. We rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice in your salvation. 
Rapture my soul with your glory. Lord, you captured my heart. You raptured my soul with your glory. Would you capture my heart and you rapture my soul with your glory? Lord, you captured my heart and you rapture my soul. You glory. You captured my heart and you raptured my soul with your glory. Lord, you captured my heart and you raptured my soul with your glory. Lord, you captured my heart and you raptured my soul with your glory. Would you captured my heart and you raptured my soul with your glory. Hallelujah. Lord, you captured my heart, you raptured my soul with your glory. Lord, you captured my heart, and you raptured my soul with your glory. Lord, you captured my heart, and you raptured my soul with your glory. Stand in awe. We stand in awe, you Lord. Stand in awe, your glory. Stand in awe, your Majesty. Captivated, captivated, captivated by you, Lord. You raptured my heart and you captured my soul with your glory. Lord, you raptured my heart and you raptured my soul with your glory. An unbeliever, someone who's never found what it means to walk in the overcoming power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And all these various issues and all these various different things that we know that God wants us to have, like these works and greater works, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the display of heaven through our life. There's something bigger than the vision that makes all of that worthwhile, that motivates me not to lower the bar, not to give up, not to weary in well-doing, not to faint. Can you imagine what it is? I want you to think about what maybe that could be. Some of you may be thinking, well, you know, eternal life, obedience to God. It's bigger than that. It's bigger. Say it bigger than eternal life, bigger than obedience to God. Yeah, bigger. Fellowship. His manifest presence. Because when I find myself overwhelmed, when I find myself seeming to not, to fall short, it, it's just the thing, to fall short of the signs and wonders and the miracles and the display of his power in my life, of what I feel he wants me to do, I just find myself just repose, I just repose, I just fall, I just, I just, I just lay back in the realms of my fellowship and my relationship with him, that really all that I want is him. All that I really want is his presence. 
So when I started looking at myself, well, how, how, how have I done here or how have I done there? Oh, God, why is it that that level of your power and glory, which I know you commanded, is supposed to be. I know you ordained it. I know that you demanded it of me. Oh, God. And you find yourself there. Oh, Lord, what does it take? Then all of a sudden, you're just standing there, you know, saying, and, and, and there's, no less, there's no less pressing in. There's no less contending. I had a, I had a wonderful man of God. I'm just going to say this to you because, I, you know, and it's, you can say it's self-serving if you want, you know, but it's just an example of, of, of really what needs to be. There needs to be, there needs to be people in the earth that's not going to lower the bar. A great man of God, a great man of God recently he wrote me and he said, Mark, he said, thank you so much that you've never let up that you just as radical, radical about healing and miracles, whether anybody gets healed and, or gets, has a miracle, as if there, everybody gets healed and has miracles. You don't faint, you don't weary, you press it in. Thank you that there's somebody still doing it. And not finding a reason or an excuse because if all, after all, you know, I've been, I become, you know, successful in my, in my dissertation or successful in my presentation of the gospel or, or my insights or of the things that I feel myself to be expert in in the church. And I don't want to ruin it by doing a call for miracles and signs and wonders. Can you hear me? Yeah. Somebody said, well, I don't feel qualified. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What is it that you do feel qualified about? Please let me know. I want to know this. Give me what, what is it that you're qualified to do? Give me a break. You know, in the community of science, you know, it is a laughing matter when somebody says I'm an expert. It's like, okay. <laughs> you're the only person that believes that. You're an expert for like, you know, five minutes. And then since she, then whatever it was that you were an expert with is just overthrown by a new discovery. <laughs> that maybe you didn't get the memo yet. I'm telling you right now. What are you qualified for? You think about this, dear people. Look, it, it, here's, look at the beginning of it where God, God sought us out. God ordained, you know, and there, there's, there, I get to this place with the Lord sometimes. I'll say, Lord, I know you ordained me. I know you, you searched me out. You sought me out. You called me. Lord, I didn't choose you. You chose me in that sense and called me to bring forth this fruit of relationship that I am so intimate with you. I'm in this place where my heart doesn't condemn me. And whatever I ask, you do. And Lord, it seems like I've been asking some stuff and you're not doing it. Huh? Are you with me? Am I looking over here? Adjust your halo. Okay. Lord, it seems like I'm asking you to do some stuff and you're not doing it. Lord God, what's wrong over here? Because I know the problem is not with you, but it's with me. You get into that, right? You should. Otherwise, you're not in the fight. You're not in the fight. You're not even in the fight. The pressing in, the contending for the faith. Recognizing that the Lord is preparing us unto every good work in Christ Jesus. And those, those good work, that works, those good works are his signs, his wonders and miracles as well as his deeds. His compassion, his mercy, his kindness. His long suffering, his patience. I have, I have really... I have always had a real challenge with patience. Anybody who works with me, you will know. You notice that, don't you? It's like this job is going to get done. How long do we have to get this job done? And you know, some people say, well, it's going to take us a week to get it done. And I'm saying three hours. You know me, right? If you've been in any of you, you know, you the sweat, blood, and get after it. Whatever it takes, let's get this thing done. Patience with ourselves, patience with people around us to recognize what God wants his glorious church to look like. What does he want it to be? The expression of those who have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, who've been made a new creation through the power of the resurrection, who've been baptized with his Holy Ghost and fire and have divine expression, 
who have their conversation, their lifestyle in the heavenly realm where heaven is like rays from the sun beaming out of our life to everyone. That's the light of the world. That's being a light of, to the world. You are the light of the world. And yet seeing that not be what it's supposed to be in God's people's lives where they've not learned how to yield to the Holy Ghost, they still walk in fear and intimidation because they, they're, they're not qualified. See, it has nothing to do about me being qualified. It's the spirit of my Father speaking through me. So I never rely upon my ideas and concepts to whether I'm qualified or not. The spirit of my Father, I'm confident that the spirit of my Father is going to speak through me. I, I, don't, I don't concern myself with how many people have gotten healed in my statistics before I make a call for signs and wonders and miracles. It's about obeying God and doing what he says to do. And he's the one who does the miracles. Jesus does the miracle. I can insist on him to do it. I mean, you know, I'm doing a, I'm doing a little booklet right now on the, on the, seven, the seven miracles of the, of the Gospel of John. Because there's seven miracles highlighted in the Gospel of John. You can make it, there's an eighth one that you could put in there, but really it's just seven signs. It's called, literally it's, it's designated that each time a, a miracle happens in, in, in the Gospel of John. And you know, I, I, you know, I love being captivated by uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, she's never put a request on him up until this day, but she knows what's already happened with her son. You know, when you're hanging out with your firstborn son for 30 years, you know what I'm saying, which most people would say he's a mama's boy, but he's just obedient son. Dad's already dead. And you see that the shift has taken place. He's been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You already know he's God, manifested in the flesh, but he's not allowed to do anything. All of a sudden now he's, he's endued the power. And mom comes up and starts being the one who's going to give him, you know, a, 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 a human guidance and what he's supposed to do and says listen they have no wine <laughs> they've run out of wine and she knows exactly what's going on and he says listen woman what's going on here you know look wait a minute i'm not taking my instructions from you basically is what he's saying you know what does that have to do with me and you that's nothing to do with us it's their problem they can't plan good enough for their wine program for their marriage i mean what does that have to do with it are you with me and look at her faith. Look at she moves in his persistent faith. It's just like the Syrophoenician woman. She persistently moves in faith. She says to the servants, which as far as we know, don't have any reason to have to obey her. Says, listen, go over there and whatever he tells you to do, do it. It's like she totally ignored him. I mean, that's a perfect Jewish mom. She totally ignored him. You know, he's talking, but I'm not hearing nothing. This is the way it's going to go down. And so she's got all these servants standing there looking at Jesus. I mean, what's Jesus going to do? Just go away, get out of my face. No, they're there. They're, they're, they're waiting. Because we know your mom told us to stay here and wait for you to give us the instruction. I don't know how long they waited. But this persistence of laying on of Jesus and saying, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to initiate something here. So the reality of it is, he says, my time hasn't come yet. Wait a minute, it's not, it's not, it's not started. But because of her insistence, she changes the plan in the program. You know, I was just calculating, we're just calculating, dealing with how much water they had to carry to, to, to fill up six of these jars, which basically were somewhere around 200 to 250 gallons each. That weighs a lot. It's tough to carry that many jars. So I'm sure they went and, with buckets and got water and kept bringing. I mean, that's a miracle. This takes, some, this takes a whole lot of cooperation with a lot of people. Just waiting on what Father wants to do through Christ Jesus in our lives. The recognition, I think that there's a whole lot of you and I coming to recognize that he has come into our life. That we have a heavenly assignment. Yes. That there is an authority given to us that we can actually set almost somehow, as it were, the basis of how things are going to go down. It's not even in, you know, it's not like we're, we already know, no, we already know what the will of God is. The will of God has already been made manifest to us. And you and I, what we're doing is pressing in to cooperate with that will. And when we do, and in the midst of that tension, the Lord shows us the places in our lives that are compromised, the places that are, that are conflicted. 
you know, he's telling, showing us where we're stained with the world. He did, because he said, be unspotted from the world. Have no fellowship with the world. Yeah. Don't, don't find anything there. Don't have any value system there. And, and, and there's a lot of things that are, are having to be dealt with and aligned properly in our life so that there is no other spirit that our spirit is hooking up with. I mean, it's a very, it's a terrible thing for the Holy Spirit to have to deal with you and I, allowing our spirit to be hooked up with the spirit of the world. And then all of a sudden, we're going to come to church and somehow hook up with this flow of signs and wonders and miracles. Look, you've never known the, you've never known happiness and joy and celebration like there is when your spirit hooks up, hooks up with the Holy Spirit Amen. and heaven begins to be made Amen. manifest for you. Amen. You know, I, I, I drove up and I looked at the kids running around and they're having fun and bless their heart, they're having fun, <laughs> running with a ball, doing the silliest things. <laughs> and if you can go out there and have that fun with that, I mean, come on. I mean, at some point in time, look, this, this advances thing a little bit, okay? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let's yes. put a little bit more excitement and thrill in it, okay? Are you with me? Yes. If they're going to leave it to this to human realm, let's put a little more excitement, a little more th you know, challenge in it. But, you know, the reality of what Father wants to do in here and in our lives so supersedes, so goes beyond anything, anything that you could participate with in the realms of that part of your life and your being where joys and excitement and the thrill is, and when so, unfortunately, so many of God's people never enter into that. This is just a religion, man. It's just to show up to a program and hear somebody tell about Jesus and that, you know, if you, you know, you're just a terrible sinner and a rotten person and he's good and wonderful and merciful. So if you'll ask him, he'll tolerate you. Kind of, you know, and you won't have to die and go to hell. You go to heaven. It's bigger than that. It's God's come and dwells in me. Yes. Yes. God has come yes. set up his tabernacle here. Go ahead and be seated. Let me, let me just tell you this about this. You know, you know what happened. You know what happened. Adam and Eve were tempted with a, a notion, an idea that they could be gods. Did you know that? Did you know that that was really the temptation? He would say, you know, I was, I, I read quickly a report that CNN did about all these people who say they love the Bible and then not, none of them quote it properly. And I, I read, read through it and I'm like, this is a great article. Man, somebody, this is the best news I've heard. Really, our, our journalism that is really reporting the accurate events of the conditions as they stand. And then all of this stuff, all of the way from, you know, the fact that, you know, Eve ate the apple. It's just not even the scripture, you know. Uh, you, know the, you know, pride goes before a fall. It's not even the scripture. It's worse than that. Huh? Fall, pride goes before destruction. It's worse than a fall. Destruction, destroyed. And a haughty spirit? No, that's before the fall. And, and I'm just thinking, you know, God, you know, it's just, it's just you know, they, they were reporting, and the theme of the report was, all these people who love the Bible have never read it. And the statistics are in, because they went out there, they did journalism, they researched it, they talked to a bunch of theologians, the, all these scholars, you know, basically, you know, weighed in on it and said, look, you know, if you take all these Christians, you basically put them in a class, and they'll all fail. <laughs> they'll fail. If you give them, you know, just a proper evaluation like you would on any subject, an entrance exam in the school. It fell. You'd have to go take a special program. You know, like the GED program or whatever. <laughs> right? We, 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 need, we need to deal with some, we need to deal with these things in our life. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, we discover that what went on in the temptation was that Adam and Eve were tempted to be God. And in the midst of this, they ultimately allowed the God of this world to come and be there, the one who exercised dominion over their lives. They were driven out of the presence of God, driven out. 
and not only driven out of the presence of God, but kept out by, a, by an, what, we would, what the Bible calls a cherub angel or a protector angel who stood there with a flaming sword. So that there was no way they could come back into this paradise with God. So they were, they were literally ultimately in this realm of being under the authority of the satanic. They are in the place called the world. That's the world. And all your culture and all of everything that you and I basically, in many respects, identify with, it's just a worldly system. We allow these things to play in our lives. If I don't allow the things to play in my life. There was a time I did. But there, you know, God, too many of God's people allow these things to play in their life. Everything from, you know, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, all that is in the world, it's not of the Father. And there's so many, there's so many ways in which those realms of darkness would access God's people. And you and I have got to learn how to shut the door on it and not fellowship with it and be unstained by it. Because otherwise we're conflicted and we're missing out on all the fun. I mean, God proved over and over again how evil and how wicked men are. Let me read to you. I look at it. I'll just give you a sum, real quick summary. Romans chapter 10. Forgive me. Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. Just open up your Bibles. Romans chapter 3, beginning of verse 10. The Lord says this. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Well, people think, well, I'm not so bad. <laughs> you contrast and compare yourself against the devil. That's why you're looking so good. You need to come up here and stand in the light for a minute, and all of a sudden you'll see all those stains and all that weirdness and all that wrong attitude and behavior and hate and broken relationship and strife and bickering and, and all the stuff that goes on with the, the worldly realm of living in a place where Satan dominates what you feel and what you think to where ultimately, you know, it's just the, the, the chaos of the world around you will show it. I mean, animal planet will show it. Huh? Huh? What is that other one? Earth? Planet Earth 2. We'll show it. Planet Earth 1 shows it too. You know, you got a little nice little bird flying around, all of a sudden swoops down a hawk, <laughs> takes them and starts tearing them to pieces and eating them, you know? And on and on it goes. You know, you got a little, you know, this nice little rabbit hopping along. Next thing you know, out of the bush jumps a tiger, tears them to shreds. And, and then we want to try to make, oh, we want to make theories and ideas about it. No, 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 that's a description of the, the spirit of the world. That's what's going on. That stuff is influencing your thoughts and your behaviors and your attitudes so much so that the psalmist said we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That means every day you're, shaped, you're not only were you born under, the, under the, the authority of this demonic realm that is everything opposite of God, everything contrary to who he is and what he designed life to be, but every day you're being shaped to be just like the devil himself. And until something happens, there's no way out. There's no liberation until there's an event that takes place. There's, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do about it. So you say, oh yeah, I, I don't believe that. Well, you know what? Then you be happy all day. I said to a person, <laughs> I said to the other, the other day, I said, I said, you know, what, if, if you could, wouldn't you want to be happy all the time? And they, they said, Yes, I, yeah, that makes sense. Yes, I would want to be happy all the time. I said, see, it shows that you're not in charge of your life. And then they started backpedaling. No, 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 I don't want to be happy all the time. You know, I, I need to be sad some so, right? So that happiness will be, will be better. I said, really? You believe what you just said? I think your first response was accurate. No, I, I, I had a gotcha moment, you know. I, you're not in charge of your life because there's nobody in their right mind who wants to be sad, depressed, unhappy, have more people that dislike them because of their own behavior. Of course, you just never, people don't dislike you, you know, because of your own misbehavior. They just, they just dislike you because they're messed up. Did, you, did everybody know that? Did you know that nobody ever li disliked you because of your misbehavior? Raise your hand. 
Because that's where you're stuck in a wrong perception. That's where we get stuck in a wrong perception. It's all our fault. But when you make it somebody else's fault, they did it. You know, when you get around me, things are going to get messy in the meeting. So that they can get good. Amen. Things are going to get messy so we can sort it out. Amen. Are you with me? You might have all your stuff piled up in one place and it looks good. No, we got to sort it out. You know, we got to throw, you know, everything around over here and get it all, you know, grouped into its proper location so we can truly get organized. So that things can truly be right in their life. Things might get messy with me, but they're going to get, they always get good. Amen. There'll be people who will, who will duck out of here and say, wow, that was a bad event because they never wanted things to be, you know, reproved in their life, straightened out in their life. But everybody who comes to the light, they want, they want to be straightened out. They want to be corrected. And in that heart and that attitude, more breakthrough comes. Heaven begins to... Begins to move in the midst of your soul. Hallelujah. 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 Fellowship with God. Being in His presence. Having his approval, living in that is something that we're gifted with and we can't make anything bigger than that. And that becomes the means by which we lay aside every sin and every weight. It is the means by which you and I will not choose to obey the realms of darkness and, and, and agree with a demonic power that is trying to suggest some perverted thing in our thinking. And because we have no filter. The blood will give you a filter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ will give you a filter so that you can understand what's good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong, what is of God and what is of Satan. And then all of a sudden you quit yielding your thoughts there, you quit yielding your members there, you quit yielding your attitudes there, you quit yielding your affections there, and there, there begins to be the freedom of the Spirit of the living God to flow out of our emotions, to flow out of our attitudes. That, that's the place all of a sudden that the gifts of the Spirit, I mean there is nothing so wonderful as wisdom, the insights of the divine to know how to move with God in all these different things for miracles and signs and wonders. Look at Jesus and all of the wisdom that he had and how he did things so specifically. He had the insight, the instruction to how to move with God, the Father who was doing the work in the miracles that he performed. To know how to yield our members to him where tongues and interpretation of tongues comes out. You can never have interpretation of tongues unless you have no more fear. Amen. It takes boldness and confidence in relationship with the Lord for you to step out and say, I'm going to interpret this. You have no more self bang anymore. It's not you speaking anymore. It's the spirit of your father. You've got to get some confidence about the spirit of the father, the spirit of the son. I got the spirit of the father speaking through me. I got the spirit of the son speaking through me saying, Abba, Father. You hear me? Yeah. What am I, I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. That Christ is coming and he's, he's, he's set up residence in my life. The Holy Ghost has come and set up residence in my life because of the work that God has performed by His only begotten Son. He has given to us the empowerment and the ability to do this successfully. So therefore there is no excuse. Amen. Before there was, you know, there was an excuse. There was an excuse. Now there's no more excuse. Let me just quickly just read this because I, I, I took you there. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands. This is the world. This is the unredeemed man. If you've not been born again, if you've not been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, born of the Spirit, now to live in the Spirit, Partaker of that wonderful gift that God gave called salvation that gave to us his heavenly realm, his nature, his fellowship, his presence. This is who you are. You may think, well, I'm not so bad after all. You, but you've never stood in his presence. You stood in his presence. And then suddenly you recognize how undone you are, how tweaked, how messed up how you are. 
then all of a sudden you'll get enough wisdom to go, you know, I've blown it. I've really just destroyed everything, every good thing that has ever come my way. That's what you're going to do. You're going to destroy every good opportunity that you ever get. Even if it's random events, you'll destroy it. Men are excellent at perfect champions, experts at destroying every opportunity they get. That is good. When they don't know Christ Jesus, when, because they're messed up, men are tweaked. Sin is, the way to the sin is death. Pride results in destruction. A haughty spirit results in a fall. That's just the continual ruination of humanity. And they blame it on everybody around them. But then all of a sudden they get old enough to where that it doesn't matter anymore. Because they look in the mirror and they're so wrinkled up that there's nothing to be, you know, too excited about. They're at the end of their life and, they, and then suddenly they're like, I messed everything up. I had all these great opportunities. I just messed it up. I just ruined everything. None of my children like me. I was sitting with a guy the other night on an airplane just talking about things of, of heaven, how much God loves them. He's just, none of my kids like me. I spoiled them. I gave them everything that they ever wanted. I just messed everything up. He was a, you know, a nice guy. As nice guys go. But here's the nice guys. Not righteous. They do not understand. None of them seek after God. Even if people say, oh, I want to know them, and they're going after all these religions, they're not seeking after God. There's not a sincere heart. There's always something self-serving in it. There's always something rebellious in it. There's always something of their own, of their own rebellious thinking. Are you with me? Because this is what God says. So therefore, I know, what, I know that there's ulterior motives going on. They are all gone out of the way. They all together become unprofitable to God. There is none that does good. No, not one. None. Check this out. Talk about bad breath. The throat is an open sepulcher. Are you with me? Yeah. And everything that's coming out of their mouth, it just stinks of death. The throat, just every, just every perversion, every wicked thing, every wrong thing. Well, listen, relativism and humanism is going to say not so. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's been proven over and again, it is so. And you can go ahead and prove it to yourself by ruining your life as the experiment. Are you with me? Huh? It's like the guys, you know, experimented with various different drugs and... And, and cures on their own body and they watch themselves waste away. You can experiment on your own self if you don't want to believe God. But everybody who's hearkened unto the Lord has, been, has received the wisdom that comes from above and prevented the disaster of the self-destruction. This is the opportunity Father gives to us. Do I still, am I still at sometimes tempted to be upset with someone and, 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 and value, evaluate them based upon, you know, some critical thought, some strive, some suggestion other than what comes right out of the realms of the love of God? Yes. But what do I do? I say, no. <laughs> and I yield my members to the Spirit of the Lord. Does that mean I don't rebuke people? No, that's my job. One of my job assignments is to get in people's face and say, you're messing up. And it's not based upon, if it's based upon my own relativism, if it's based upon my own human perception, then it's just as messed up and as wrong as anyone else. But I'm a person who's going to speak the word of the Lord and say, what God, based on what God has said, yeah. you're doing it wrong. Stop it now. Because why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that for my good? No, for your good. It's a self-destruction. That this wonderful love of God compels me to say, stop it. And of course, I want the Lord, I want the Lord's house to be what he purchased it with his own blood to be. I, I'm tired of posers and false witnesses saying that they know the Lord. They're living just like all the rest of the wicked people. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing worse than a poser, someone who says they know the Lord, and this is what it looks like to be born again when they don't live it, because their damnation is double worse. Being a false witness. Bringing shame and reproach to the cross. Are you with me? And this stuff needs to be corrected. 
you know, but it's really compelled by love to say, get it right, because you, because you're going, it's your, your, your day of appointment has already been defined by the Father. My days have already been numbered by him. He's asking me, why don't you get some smarts and number them too? Why don't you recognize that your everyday life is about preparing for your meeting with me? Yes. Preparing for the greatest opportunity. And that's, I mean, and, and what he does is he, in his love, he gives us this communion and he gives us this fellowship where we, it's not some kind of superstition. It's not some kind of imagination. It's a real supernatural visitation, habitation, encounter with him. Yes. Where prayer is not a religious obligation, it's an opportunity for wisdom and insight to flow through me as the Spirit of the Lord moves upon me and I interact with Almighty God. Did you notice how forgetful we are? Anybody notice? The Holy Ghost has come to give us a memory. He's come to bring into our remembrance and every time I pray, He brings into my remembrance. Every time I get, every time I, you know, if I just get people, Pray for 15 minutes. If you pray for 15 minutes and go radically after it, because about 15 minutes, you should start busting through the ice. Huh? I have a cold heart. You'll bust through the ice. And then you'll want to keep on going. And then 15 minutes will turn into 30 minutes, and who knows where it goes from there. Because it's just fellowship is wonderful. When you begin to understand communion and fellowship with God, Prayer is no longer religion, it's relationship. Yes. It's not long something that's imposing itself upon you because you're addicted to having, you know, the, the sense realm and the sensuality of that which is placed within a world around us and propagated by movies and all the other stuff that's so exciting. It's crazy. It's great. It's the wrong kind of excitement. It's unholy emotions that it is excited. People become addicted to that. Watching somebody killed, watching some this and that and the other thing, you know. Where people are literally addicted to as the world turns, which should be called as the world churns. <laughs> huh? But reality of it is, Papa, today, did you know that the day is actually a living thing? It's a living thing with a purpose. The scripture says he came moving to the spirit. He came moving to the spirit of the day. To say he was walking in the cool of the day, it's just not what's said there. It's like when you don't understand, what does it have? There's no Westerner that can understand he came moving to the spirit of the day, so we've got to translate it, you know, he came walking in the cool of the day. Where does spirit ever translate cool anyways? I mean, it is cool to be in the Holy Ghost, but where does spirit ever translate? It doesn't. It doesn't. You could say maybe, you could maybe get away, he came walking in the breeze of the day, but that doesn't work. And so now we try to, you know, we try to continue to reduce it from spirit to breeze. Now we'll go to cool because the effect of breeze, you feel cool. Wild, crazy translators. True. Reality of it is today, there's a purpose, a divine purpose in the day. It's, it's a living thing. Amen. It's a living thing. Everything that God has is a living yeah. thing. And, and we're caught, if, not, if we're not careful, we're caught over in a realm of darkness, even as those who have been born again and brought as those who are alive from the dead. And we're now influenced by the wrong models and the wrong thinking and the wrong behavior and the wrong desires. When Father has given us wisdom and insight to really pursue, to know what, and investigate, to understand what it was he created when he made it. So that we can participate with what life really is like, what love is really about. Amen. Love is a good thing. Yes. <laughs> love is lovely. And everybody should say, love is so good, I'm going to give my life to this. Understanding and pursuing this love. Everybody should be excited about love. Yeah. But if I, we find out over and again that it isn't good enough. Because too many people slip into dislike. And they'll slip, dislike is hate. Somebody says it's not deep, dark hate. It's kind of shadowy hate. We just hate. But we don't like to do that. We don't want to, we don't want to, absolutisms. 
We don't want to we don't want to we don't want to do it that way. But God wants us to do it that way so that we give no place for compromise. So there's no wiggle room for the devil where there's an absolute surrender to his way, where we ultimately begin to yield ourselves to him. And there is no we're unstained from the world, as Jude said. I mean, forgive me, as James said, unstained. And of course, Jude said it, too. Just in a different way. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they use deceit. When they speak words, it's like a bite of a poisonous viper. Ouch. Don't talk to me, kind of thing, right? But, they, but that's the conversation going on. You know, when you, when you, look, at, when you look at James, James says, James says, a ship, though it be so great, it is steered by just a very small rudder. He said, even so, the tongue sets the course of men's lives. Did we, if we could just grab a hold of that, understand for a minute, wait a minute, what's, what I'm saying is setting the course of my life and even to the point of defying what God has ordained? Such a little member can have such an impact that it literally destroys and sets on fire everything that was good. It sets on fire everything that belongs to life and, and everything that belongs to my opportunity as an individual to, to take a hold of that which God has ordained for me to enjoy eternally, but yet my tongue burns it all up and ruins it and destroys it. Boy, if we could just grab a hold of that wisdom and go, somebody need to do something about this tongue. Yeah. God, any, where's that duct tape? Vice grip. I mean, just kind of clamp it down to the... Can we do away with this? Anybody got a knife? But then, you know what I'm saying? Of course, we don't want to start self-mutilation here. Somebody said, oh, when we were in the meeting, he said, cut your tongue off. Well, I'll tell you what, Jesus said, cut your hand off. Pluck your eye out. The church of the, of the one-eyed. The church of the one-eyed saints. <laughs> <laughs> the redeemed, the one-eyed saint. I mean, come on. No, no, no. Just to get real with God and serious with God, to recognize, wait a minute, Father, what did you do for me? What did you do for me to, to liberate me? God saw men in his state and in his love. He was unwilling to let men stay as that if they were willing to escape from it. And that's the point. Well, you've got to get real with God instead of making excuses to behave like Adam, to behave like fallen Adam, to be have this state of, of, of thinking, really, that is the very core of it. We want, to be, we want to be gods. We want to be the determiner of our own destiny and, and, and the one who makes our, you know, and creates our world according to our own choosings. We have, no, we have no power to do that, no ability to do that. We'll self-destruct with that. So, the scripture says in Hebrews 1, 3. <laughs> Look at this verse of scripture. It's just crazy. It is amazing. God's love. Yes. God's mercy. Father has so utterly, totally, completely provided for us Freedom from the powers of darkness, from the spirit of the world, and from sin. There is no more excuses. Amen. Amen. It was good enough for him to speak the word and create the vast expanse of the ages of eternity of the universe of you and me. But when it came to redemption, he could not just speak a word. It was not potent enough, powerful enough. And that's it's hard to even begin to, to imagine. That his word is not powerful enough to speak it. The one who upholds all things by the word of his power. It wasn't potent enough to redeem you and me. He said, I'll become like them. I'll show them how. I'll secure them in it. I'll take upon the robes of sinful flesh and be made like unto them to show them 
the kind of heavenly and eternal glory that you purposed when you created Adam in your image and in your likeness, when you shaped him after your own fashion. Father. And he offered purification for our sins and having purged our sins. Think about it. Having purged my sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Expecting to see every one of his enemies be made his footstool. Expecting to see you, see you and I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of the Holy Ghost, by this wonderful work of the new creation. Huh? We were walking around in a world of our life that was completely desolate wilderness. You know, the, the aftermath of a, 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 a nuclear explosion and worse. And the Lord brings forth a new creation and brings, brings us into a place from being a, a desolate wilderness where there is no water to being a garden of Eden to being a place where there's only thorns and briars to now having every pleasant and good thing looking like the paradise of God, the Eden of God being the spiritual state of our life where we're standing now in this beautiful thing that God has made and we want to go back to the desolate wilderness. There's something seriously wrong there. Father's made a way for you and I through what he did for us when he loosed us from our sins and made us priests and kings to live now a heavenly life, a heavenly existence by the power of the Holy Ghost that will teach us how to think right, to act right, to talk right, where our tongue is no longer set on fire of hell, but it's set on fire of the Holy Ghost, the, heaven of the, the heavenly power, the working of the Spirit of the Lord that brings change. Not only to our life, but to the lives of those that are around us because our word, the word that's coming out of our mouth is His word. It's the power of the new creation. He's upholding this. At that moment in time, at that moment in time, Adam's disobedience no longer had impact or effect upon my life. As according to Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, because the obedience to Christ Jesus was far greater in effect than where I died because of Adam's sin and transgression and I lived under the power of the reign of death. I now reign in life by him, Christ Jesus, by one, where his obedience was more impactful on my life than the disobedience of Adam, where by his sins, by, by, by his blood, he not only cleansed my sins or not only took care of my sins, but an opportunity for the sins of the whole world. Because he by himself removed the power of disobedience, the power of the world, the power of the demonic realm, the power of a sinful authority and reign of death over our life and made opportunity for us to come in to where he alone now is the decider the ruler, the influencer of our lives. The opportunity to stay here. Is our fiery darts going to come? Yes, but you got to understand. Is there a war waging? Yes, but you got to understand. Father has given to us the, prepar the ability to be able to confront it. To where I'm, I'm walking around always with my feet prepared for the gospel. I'm, I'm ready to preach the gospel, to deal with whatever confronts the reality of, of the heavenly realm in which I live in. Because my feet are prepared. I've been prepared. I, I'm, I'm not just, you know, <laughs> saying God, my, my sermons aren't God who helps them who helps themselves. <laughs> and all the other misquotes of the Bible. My feet are my life and my spirit has been prepared to the Lord as I because I'm seeking him after the realms of spirit of the Holy Spirit and truth. And I know what it is he said, I know what his purpose for me to do because it's been revealed by his word. His word's working powerfully with divine power on the inside of me. And I'm giving myself every day to the word of God because it's there that he makes he, he strengthens me. Yes. He causes me to remember, he gives me divine insight. 
You know, you give yourself to reading the Bible every day. God is so powerful in his effect of our life that every day you'll be reading something that will prepare you to deal with what you're going to have to face right. in the day. Because that's just how involved God is. And all you were doing was reading a Bible plan. And it wasn't a coincidence, it was his hand. Amen. It was his hand. Because <laughs> every word of God is living. It's living. It's living. It's living. It's living. The words that I'm speaking out right now will have an eternal impact and effect on people. How much greater is his word which he speaks out and its impact? and his decrees, and that which he has ordained, and that which he has established. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The work on the cross looked like total catastrophe and defeat to the person who only judges based upon the seeing of their eye. When they evaluate everything around them based upon the seeing of the eye and the hearing the ear, ear it's total defeat, it's total disaster. But the reality of it is it was the greatest moment in all of creation where Christ Jesus by himself completely overthrew and defeated the enemies of God, the armies of hell, the powers that rebelled against the Almighty whose purpose was to destroy everything good. Jesus by himself was released from an earthly body so that he could go devastate hell. Only spiritual insight would allow us to see it. And those kinds of things are happening all the time. And people are stuck in the place of a human mind. Uh -huh. Thus you can never know the knowledge of the Lord or flow in the wisdom of God or the knowledge that He would give to us in the word of knowledge. And it's sad. And then... If people start doing it, it's perverted because they're sitting around and they're trying to, in their imagination, piece together. Some of the thing that supposedly is from God doesn't work that way. So the supernatural event of the moving of the Spirit of God, just like raising the dead, just like walking on the water, just like working a miracle where somebody's blind and now see, you don't sit around and try to piece that together with your thoughts. Oh, but God has given us the ability to be strong, the strength of the Lord, power of His might. He's given us the ability to take into ourselves all that He Himself has. And He says, this is how you'll do it. Your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. You're already, always ready to deal with whatever comes at you with the Word of God. You understand that all the strongholds are brought down by speaking the good news Amen. of what Christ did yes. when He purchased our salvation in Calvary's cross, when He rose from the dead. You're, you're, you have a helmet of salvation. Your whole mind and thinking realm is the whole, your, uh, your understanding of your life and your identity is the salvation that has been brought to you and me. That's how we think. That's how we process. I'm washed in the blood. There is no stain of sin here. I'm white as snow. White like wool. I'm in him and he's in me. If you don't have faith in the blood to cleanse you from sin, then you still have sin. Because if the blind man doesn't have faith that Jesus is the healer, he's going to remain blind. God the Holy Ghost has come to give us this wonderful work of faith. The Word of God supplied spiritually to us as spirit and life to give to us and part to us faith. <laughs> A measure of faith is given to all men even though all men do not have faith. And that's not a paradox or a contradiction. It's, it's easily understood. It's a gift that God supplies, an opportunity that every man has available to them, but somebody has got to be willing to respond to God and participate with them in it. Amen. To believe what he has done, this great salvation that he's wrought for us, to say, it's mine. I can see beyond that which my perception has limited me to see. I can see through the, through the, the eyes of faith. Faith is sight. It's not blind. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can hear the voice of the Spirit. I can understand because 
of my willingness to respond to God, what Father has championed for me through Christ Jesus. For if he redeemed me, how much more shall he establish me? How, if, he's, if, he came for my, if he came to bear my sins in his own body, how much more will he come to take me captive and instruct me and show me all the ways of life? If I will just respond with a true heart and say, I want you, God. I don't want this world. I don't want sin and iniquity. Listen, spirit, listen. You know, people talk about relativism and, and humanism and secularism. It's going to get a whole lot worse. The Bible shows us it's going to... I'm not a prophet of doom. The Bible shows it's going to get a whole lot, whole lot worse. And somebody said to me not too long ago, said, well, wouldn't God repent if there's still ten righteous? I said, it's going to get a whole lot worse. God sees the ruination of sin. And it may be. We may have another thousand years here. And I know people think that I'm just a heretic when I say that. But you try to tell the church 2,000 years ago that, hey, guys, we're going to be around here for 2,000 years. They, they might have stoned you. They might have cast you out of the church. But it's going to get a whole lot worse. And we've got to recognize, dear people, if we're not defensed, if we don't have a defense, if we're not set in Christ Jesus the way he's purposed us to be set in him, the way he's provided for us to be protected by him, then the atmosphere, the spirit of the world will overwhelm us and begin to conflict us and will compromise with it and it will overtake us. You can see its influence now. How about when it's ten times worse than it is now? Relativism, secularism, listen, humanism, the, demon, the acceptance of the demonic, that deception will become worse. Far, far worse. Far worse yeah. than it is now. Than it is now. Far worse. There won't be any more harvest. The time of the Gentiles will be over. The time of God dealing with the nations will be over. It's not because the Father gives up, because He's long suffering. There's just no more harvest there. He turns to Israel, to the nation of Israel, and he, and, he be, and he takes the veil away and he begins to plead with Israel as a nation. And that's what we see in the book of Revelation. People, I've got all these different interpretations of it because they want to believe already a presupposed bias to try to write that into what God says. But quit writing your stuff in and read what it says and leave it there. Amen. 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 Doesn't work in any other class. Why should it work in this class? The school of the spirit. Doesn't work in doesn't work in calculus. Are you with me? It doesn't work in physiology. You can go ahead and be imaginative in physiology and try to describe to the teacher what, how it really you think is working, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna be satisfied with the grade you're gonna get. And you have to describe it like the book said. Hallelujah. Come on now, let's describe our lives and what we're doing and what we believe and what we yield our bodies, our members to, our spirits to. God wants our, wants our attitudes, He wants our emotion, our behavior to be like weapons. Weapons in God's hand that destroys unrighteousness, light that shines bright with the goodness of God. Instead of sorrow and sadness and defeat and bummed out because things aren't going the way you want them to go. I know how that is. It works on me too. Or it isn't happening fast enough. Everybody ought to be prophesying one by one by now. And people are still sitting there intimidated, shaking in their boots. Because they don't want to say something wrong. I got your cure. You quit saying anything at all. And, let the let, and believe in the spirit of the Father that is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how I get up every time. I, I, I don't have to concern myself about what I'm going to preach. It's the spirit of the Father. It's the spirit of the Son. Amen. Is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got a whole, you got a whole bunch of stuff over here. You got a whole bunch of empowerment. You got a whole bunch of help. Father said, just shh, shh, be quiet. I got it. Of course you're going to be quiet. If you're standing there in front of the Father and you say, Lord, you know, Lord, I got a minister today. He says, look, just take it easy. Just sit down and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll do the preaching. And you're like, wow, that is so good. I can't wait. But then he, suddenly you discover, well, he's going to use your mouth and your tongue. But it's going to bypass your mind for the most part just as much as the tongues do. Hallelujah. 
Ah. Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. I just feel like dancing. Hallelujah. And listen, there, there is a laboring for this. There's a laboring to move into these realms of, I mean, I, I just, you know, there's people that are sick and diseased. They need to come and labor. They need to labor. They need to labor. 38 years, the man who was not able to walk, we don't know whether he was weak from sickness or whether he was paralyzed, what it was, it just, just it doesn't because scripture doesn't describe. We just know he's laying there, waiting for the waters to move. You talk about pressing in. You talk about pressing in. 38 years, that's all of his life, pretty much. People now normally only live to be about 40 years during the years old, you know, in that period of time. 38 years, it's all of his life. He's in a bed ridden. Huh? And every time the water was troubled, every time his whole faith wasn't, his faith wasn't in Christ Jesus. You know nothing about him. You know, that whole multitude, they hadn't gotten the memo yet. <laughs> I guarantee you, there was nobody left after that. They all left the pool of Siloam. I mean, um, I mean the porch of uh, Bethesda. They all left the Bethesda porch. After that man who was, I mean, he was, he was notorious. Everybody see him just clawing to try to get over to the pool. Every time he was clawing, just all of his energy. It's like one time he was just about there and he was just about to put his hand in the water. And somebody else got in before him. And that was his best day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus comes, doesn't have, it takes no faith on that man's part. That man only has faith in a, in a water to get healed. He has no knowledge of faith in Christ Jesus. He says, arise, take up your bed and walk. Wow. And he immediately felt strength come in his body. And he got up and he walked away. Beautiful. I mean, God, that's, you. that's Christ Jesus. Come to us to bring us this faith, yes. to bring us this salvation, to champion our success. Yes. He by himself purged our sin. He destroyed death through the... He destroyed the power of death on the cross. He through death destroyed him that had the power of death. He abolished death and brought light, life and immortality to light through this good news. A revelation of life and immortality will hit you and as you seek for it, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll step into the rewards of it, the glory of it, as you will not let up. You just pray for more people. If somebody didn't get healed, you say, I'm going to pray for 10 more people. I'm praying with more passion than I've ever prayed for. I'm going to go after rebuking more deaf ears, blind eyes. Because the intimidation factor of Satan is always trying to get us to give up and back down and let up and change our theology and change what God says so we can feel more comfortable about our story. No, we're supposed to be living his life. It's a fight. You better have the gospel. You better have the gospel there on your lips. You better have your loins girt about with truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. My word is truth. You better have, you better understand the, the breastplate of righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. I'm living over here in glory land. I'm a saint in light. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you're going to be taken out. You're going to be taken out. Because Satan's not letting up. He don't take any vacations. He's got a full press war going on. Huh? <laughs> the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one. All you should be hearing is ch <laughs> And none should be getting into you because if it does, those fiery darts will burn up and turn to ashes all the trees of life planted in you. All the knowledge of God will be turned into nothing but burnt ash. The word of God will work with divine power on the inside yes. of you to believe. Amen. Jesus championed this by himself for you and me. 
because of his great love, he was compelled to do this. He by himself purged my sin. Purged it. And now look at what he does for me. I'm no longer, I'm no longer Romans 3, 10 through 14. Now I'm, I'm a living expression of everything that pleases God to the point that now the, the Lord tells us things. Let me just read it, just a list of, 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 of what God says about you and me and what he's done in empowering you and I, empowering us to be successful, to where that there is no excuse. He's, we have Father at work. We have God the Holy Ghost at work, we have Jesus at work. There is, ne there is never going to be any excuse for any kind of sin. It cannot be justified. He's empowered us with everything that we need. He himself is championing this by himself. He broke the yoke by himself. He brought forth the new creation by himself. He placed within us his power, his divine power that framed the universe. So that everything that you want, everything he's purposed for us to have, he wills it and does it by his divine power. But we have to participate and agree. He's given us a treasure in these earthen vessels. He's provided for us beyond all that we could think or ask super abundantly. Amen. By this power at work in you and me. When you hear the good things of God being described and declared, you don't go to your knees and say, oh God, do it in me. You say, oh God, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, I yield to thee. Yes. But the power is here at work in me. But the power is here at work in me. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name, I yield to thee. For the power of God's at work in me. Amen. Amen. We can sing that for a little while. Hallelujah. The supply of the Spirit gives us the ability to prophesy. The supply of the Spirit gives us the ability to speak forth revelation and knowledge of God that if, if you hear, if you hearken, can, can you tell me how to have 2020 spiritual vision? Anyone. Anyone. Thank you. Second Chronicles 2020 gives you 2020 vision. Believe the Lord and you shall be established. Hearken to his prophets and you shall prosper. You'll succeed. But if you don't, if you don't, because I understand. Your memory, your memory is pathetic. My memory is sub-pathetic. When it comes to the things spiritual and of reality. And only those who give themselves to the Holy Ghost can remember. You'll remember after this meeting, but you'll forget by this evening. Unless you give yourself to the rememberer, unless you yield yourself to him. Ah, because that prayer, when you begin to touch heaven with that prayer, it's a supernatural power that begins to cause you to understand and be quickened and remember and, and have your heart and your vision and your purpose set right again. Hallelujah. That's why... My goodness, it should be continuously through the day. When you give yourself to the Word, hallelujah, your eyes are open to behold wondrous things about God and His divine purpose for our life. And this becomes an exciting thing, not a religious thing, an exciting thing, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it grows and it matures and it gets bigger and bigger. To where we step into all that Father Himself has provided for us in Christ Jesus, the fullness and measure, the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, even though fully matured man. Colossians 1:22. Listen to this. Listen to this. I love this. Verse 21, you wicked people. Described there in Romans 3:10. And you that were once alienated. You talk about completely on the out, separated, a walled, you walled out. Alienated cannot come near him because you, why? You wicked. Try to tell a person that. Somebody asked me not too long ago, what is humanism? And then they, and I didn't say anything. And they were just trying to tell me, well, you know, I just believe in being honest and doing, you know, people doing, you know, do, doing what's right and treating people properly. 
And I said, it's not good enough. And he got all upset. I said, humanism. I said, you're still wicked. Who? God's not a monster. No, but you are. <laughs> your throat's an open sepulcher. And your tongue is full of poison. It's just like the bite of a serpent. We don't really want to listen to what you got to say. You're going to get some serious bad reaction out of a humanistic society. Huh? Out of a secular community of people. They believe they're not so bad. What are you talking about? Who do you think you are calling me these names? Let's fight. Because that's what it's all it is. Because they don't understand. They're blind. They're in deception. There's only one way into truth. It's through Christ Jesus. You and I are supposed to be showing what it looks like. Amen. And out of a good conversation, out of a right attitude, out of a right, you know, affection, out of a display of a whole other realm of interaction and relationship with people around us, a yells from hell starts shouting to the Lord. Amen. Are you listening to me? People still want to yield their members to a yell. They want to yield their members to doubt, to the flesh, to the whatever. Stop it. Amen. Let the righteous smack you. Yeah. Well, that would be a great title for a church. The Church of the Redeemed. The Smacking Righteous. Come, let us smite you. We reprove and correct with all authority subtitle. <laughs> that would be called, and it, it is perfect, but it would be called a cult. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just what the Lord does. He's reproving. He's correcting. I mean, come on. He's, he's opened up the door so you and I can function in all the glory and splendor of his majesty. Don't you figure we need some coaching over here? Yeah. Don't you figure we need some, you know, some straightening out, some correction? Huh? Especially those of us who are bow-legged and pigeon-toed. <laughs> and cross-eyed. Huh? And messed up equilibrium. We need some help to run this race. <laughs> Praise God for his healing power. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not telling you how bad you are. I'm telling you how bad you were. And I'm saying, don't go back to that. <laughs> I'm not telling you how bad you are. I'm telling you how bad you were. Don't go back to that. So we see somebody say, well, we came to the meeting and told us how bad we were. No, I, I, I told you how bad we are. No, I told you how bad you were. Amen. You didn't do go back to that. No. Come be taught of the Lord. Amen. Come be instructed in the ways of the Most High. Come be trained up in, in righteousness and holiness in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Amen. That you and I have been recreated in. Yes. So when you look on, you look at David, you see Father. Yeah. In his behavior, in his actions, you look at me, you see Jesus. Yeah. And I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated to that. And much of that is going to be found in a place of, of where there's controversy going on. Amen. And the Lord says, Don't you ever argue. Don't ever argue. That you may shine as lights in the midst of a perverse world. That's what, that's, what, that's what Paul said to the church of Philippians. Yeah. And I miss it a crooked and perverse. Don't ever anybody argue that belongs to Jesus. Don't grudge, begrudge anything or argue or complain or get in an argument or fire or fuss. Mm -hmm. People ask me questions all the time. If you ask me personal questions about different situations, I'll say, I'll just say, I'll say stuff like, sidestep it, let it go, don't discuss it, forget about it, pray. <laughs> it, it, it isn't even right to tokenize it. It's just get a hold of yourself. What are you going to do? You can't change any person's ability to understand. Only God the Holy Ghost can. Amen. Huh? Leave to the correction. Leave correction to the parents. Huh? Leave the, leave correction to the person who's here to perfect you. Amen. Amen. Those are here to perfect you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, if people would just press in for the healing, wait on their miracles. 
like, you know, I was, you know, raised around revivalists. They'd have, revi they'd have revival meetings run, you know, eight to sometimes 30, 40 weeks. An average revival meetings went from 12 to 18 weeks every day, twice a day. I was raised in that. I mean, you tell people some of that, some people, wow, we thought it was intense going to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then, and then you know, Thursday night youth meeting. That's just the standard stuff. Not pressing in is twice, sometimes three times a day at meetings. Those are amazing things that change your life. Yes. Somebody said, how do you even do that? I mean, you got, everybody has to work. Oh, well, there's another way. Amen. At least you come to the meeting every night. And on Saturdays and Sundays, you're there, to, you got all three. Amen. Well, when is there time to do anything else? Well, why do you need time to do anything else? <laughs> you're attending to the best thing. You get to get a hold of this and you're going to do everything else better than you've ever done it before. But we can't get people, we can't get, we can't get the sick, we can't get the diseased, we can't get the crippled to come. They come one time. Okay, we've got, we'll give you one shot at this, Lord. They have never stepped into a faith of worship that doesn't take no for an answer, that presses in, that lays hold on God. Huh? Yes. Yes. Let's the Lord work. Just soak yourself in the presence of the Lord. The same thing goes not only for your physical needs, but your spiritual needs. He's supplying them. My material needs. He protects me financially. He protects me materially. He protects me spiritually. He protects me physically. I want, I'm going to live in this protection. I got a divine protection. I'm going to keep my theology right so my faith is going to be properly placed. Amen. I'm not going to have no faith that something bad is going to happen. I don't have faith for fall. I have faith for succeed. Yes. Huh? I don't have it. Come on. Yes. Huh? It's not Amen. faith to die. It's faith to live. Amen. I just figured God needs some people to live two, three hundred years now. <laughs> it's time for some great signs and wonders. I mean, it's time for some translation. I'm pressing in to be translated. If I was, if, listen. Here I am pressing to be translated, and because I got just disappointed because three or four or five people didn't get healed, I forgot about the three or four or five people that did get healed. Because yeah. that's what, it's the way Satan always emphasizes the negative thing, the thing that yeah. didn't happen, the failure. He's, he's an expert at making you believe that you are a total failure. That's right. And if you listen to him, you can't hear the voice of the Holy Ghost telling, encouraging you, saying, no, you're a total success. I mean, your father is just like walking around heaven bragging on you right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. True. It's true. Oh, you're sitting there listening to the devil. Yeah, I just totally you know, Reality, God the Father, walking around heaven, bragging it on everyone, like you, like Job. He's bragging on you. Can, can you, do you see what my servant's doing? He's just kicking it. He prayed for a hundred people. Not a single one got healed. And he's more radical about healing and miracles than he was before he started. Can you see my son? Amen. Who has exalted my word yes. about everything? Yes. Come on, man. Yes. Come on. Because if I was allowing myself to get discouraged about something like that, I have no right. I would not even have the, I would not even have the right to start talking about being translated. I wouldn't even be in the group of the translatable. I don't want to be in the group. I've, I, you know, the Lord just kind of made that in me when I was a little kid, you know, where somebody could do it, I could do that. If somebody else could do it, I could do it. Watch out. Here, give me that. Huh? But what happens when he takes a hold of that by the Holy Ghost and you're like, I can do that. I can do all things. Amen. Yes, we but, can. but in that transition, he takes us to a whole other realm where it's not natural anymore, but supernatural. And so now we recognize, first we've got to recognize, I can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. But then he takes that thing that was in us that we could do all things, but he lays, he lays it into the perspective and at a dimension where it's not me doing it, but Christ Jesus. And now I've got more boldness, more confidence. Get out of my way. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 What God is going to do in the midst of us. What God is going to do through your life. 
the signs and the wonders and the glory and the demonstration of his power is going to break out through you. Because it's what he's ordained. If you don't weary, if you don't weary, if you don't faint, if you don't get all captivated by listening to a bunch of deceptive lies, stuck in a realm and limited by the realm of self, but knowing that what God is doing, that he's working in us to both will and do of his good pleasure. Now unto him. Who purchased us with his own blood. Looking unto him. Who is the author and finisher of our faith. Because he who began a good work shall complete it. Think, look it up. Verse scripture. I'll work backwards. Philippians 1, 6. He who began this good work. So that's just what I let the Lord do to me. When I'm feeling all fussy, I just let him grab a hold of me. But I yield myself to him. Yes, there sometimes he comes, grabs me, picks me up. And I go, oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But there's other times I have to stand up and press in because he's, he's purposed me. He's purposed me to do something, to lead something, to be something, yeah. to establish Amen. something, to promote something, to yes. model something, to break through something, to champion yes. something. Yes. Amen. Suddenly, all I'm doing is tending to something that's not any more valuable than, you know, basically a dollar, and he makes me ruler of ten cities. Suddenly, you're just because you're just faithful, just faithful. Hmm. Huh. Uh. Somebody gives you a dollar and says, invest it, and, 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 you know, you think, what? What? What are you, you going to invest a dollar and make anything off of it? And anytime soon. Oh. But with God, faithfulness in small things. Yes. We think small things like, you know, a couple hundred million. <laughs> or we may think a small thing like a couple hundred thousand, depending on how you think. Some people, small, small is bigger than others. <laughs> Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? You want more? You want to go play? Everybody else, you heard everybody's playing outside and you're not getting to play? He's got, those, he's got those wings out there, don't he? He's always flying. He's crucified for Christ. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Amen. You start, you get that praise in your heart. No matter what's going on, you start, thank you, Father, for Jesus. You just start walking around just doing this. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Something's going to happen. You're going to just hang with that. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Something's going to happen to you. What praise? What praise? Amen. Is there any higher praise? Is there any praise that brings Father more honor, more boast, more glory than saying, Thank you, Father, for Jesus. If I just pray in the name of Jesus, you'll let God, the Holy Ghost, teach you how to have a conversation that's proper. To speak praise aright. To recognize what He's done for us. As I quoted it, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, look at him, the author and finisher by faith. Yes. Philippians 2, what is it, verse 8? <laughs> he would both will and do of his good pleasure in us. Now look real quickly at Colossians 1, 22. He says this, in, his own in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. And I want you to connect that with 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He bore my sins in his own body on the tree. That now I'm being dead to sin might be unblameable, that I might be wholly unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. He bore my sins in his body on the tree that I might be wholly unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. He bore my sins in his own body on the tree. He by himself purged my sin. Purged it with his blood. Purged it with the death. Oh, my new birth and my resurrection life is found in His resurrection, but where my sin was purged was at Calvary. And there my feet are ready to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy because they are prepared with this gospel, the reality of what He's bought for me and what I have. 
I want nothing evil. I want nothing of this wickedness that Satan has taken what God has made that is so holy and beautiful and pure and clean and twisted it and perverted it so that only demons and that which is beget of demons could like it. No, I'll walk in his likeness and be trained in his purity. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what it costs me. If I need to cut the hand off, pluck the eye out, cut the foot off, cut the tongue off, mutilate myself. But the Lord hasn't left it to that realm. He's empowered us with so much ability. The strength of the Lord and the power of his might. He's given to us all of this wonderful work of heaven, the authority of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, the reality, the insight, the revelation, the working of his mighty power on the inside of us, his word that framed the heavens. We look at verses of scripture like Second Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I just reckon, I love these verses of scripture because it just causes me to remember and recognize what God is doing, his Father that is doing it. Listen to what he's doing in, in, in verse 23. And, 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 and the very God of peace, the very God of fellowship, the very God of communion, the very God that said, come on in. You that are near and you that are far off, come on in. Sanctify you holy. And God, make your whole spirit and soul and body preserved blameless. On the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, faithful is he that called you who will also do it. Jude chapter 1. There's no ending to this. I mean, I just, it just keeps going. I love, because I love meditating on this. Jude, Jude 1, 24. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Amen. People's got faith to have fault. I got faith to be faultless. Amen. People have faith to have sin. I got faith to be sinless. People have faith to be unrighteous. I have faith to be righteous. It's good stuff. Amen. It's the helmet of salvation. His feet shot of the preparation of the gospel. This is the girdle of truth. Huh? This is the breastplate of righteousness. This is the shield of faith. This is the sword of the Spirit. This is all prayer and supplication in the Spirit with watching thereunto. Hallelujah. It's what Father is doing. I know what Father is preparing me unto every good work. And he says, you've got to participate. Yes. He's looking and sees where my meditations are. He's seeing if I want to break through to discover the dimensions of the realm that he's made available to me, that he's actually given me privilege to access, to walk around in. He's even given me an opera privilege to walk, access, to walk in it, to walk around, to look around, then to go back outside, and then to come back in, and then to go back outside. And then to come back in. And then to go back in. I wouldn't do that. I'd like, hey, you know what? Loser, get rid of this person. Look how many times they come in and come out. Constantly going back to the world. Coming back in, going back to the world. Coming back in, going back to the world. Coming. No, the Lord is so merciful. But you need to come into his realm and recognize that he's going to develop another realm of sense in you and desire and appetites in your life. Amen. That will take you into a realm of thrill and ecstasy beyond anything that this world has to have, <laughs> has to offer. It will take you into a realm of pleasure beyond anything that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life could do. It take you into a realm of excitement beyond anything that you can do in a natural existence. Because you've got to come and learn. Come hubraba where Father gives you and I the ability, the power to inherit the earth. Amen. Wherever the sole of our feet tread, it's ours to claim it for the kingdom of God, to Amen. claim lives, to claim properties, to claim nations. Yes. I, mean, I mean, that's better than being like Alexander the Great. Yeah. Huh? You could be 
Randy the Saint. Think about it. You can, you can begin to move in this realm of faith unless you're allowing doubt to compromise it. You can begin to move in this realm of love unless you're allowing hate to compromise it. Some form. You can begin to move in this realm of splendor and majesty unless you let some kind of foul thing and attitude compromise it. Think about what Father has given us the privilege to press into, to, un to understand, to discover, to yield to, to function in. This greatness in God. This greatness in God. This greatness in God. To be found in Him. Not having our own righteousness, which is by the keeping of the law, which is glorious and true in its expression of God's will. But having His righteousness to show forth the righteousness of God. Not walking in our own strength and human ability, but refusing it now to now function in divine power and divine ability. Not to be stuck in doing your math and accounting based upon what's in your bank account. Begin to move in the exploits of faith to where that everybody says you can't do it and you go, I can. Watch me. Watch me. The gift of faith is, the gift of faith is far better than any discovery of thought, of mind, of thinking, or of random events. It's something that comes on you and you have it. To get to faith, faith allows you to do everything that you do in God. From being a new creation to creating a divine business, a successful business, whatever it is, to functioning in the gifts of the Spirit. Hmm? To whatever you put your hand to do, it prospers. It's a gift of faith. It's the blessing of God. It's a gift of faith. It comes on you because you yield to it. Otherwise, it's just human. It's just human. And whatever success you have is human, unless, you, unless you're able to now begin to access the supernatural supply of the Spirit that is given to us for every dimension of our life. Every dimension. You got to wait on that. You got to wait on that. Got to press into it. it it's, it's, it's only going to happen. You're only going to receive it because all that's going on is love's going on in you. You're not yes. thinking somebody doesn't like me or somehow I'm a failure, somehow I'm a bad person. No, you're just captivated by what Christ Jesus yes. has done for you. Yes. You're just in love. You're in love with everybody. You're in love Amen. with him. When you're in love with him, you can be in love with everybody. Amen. Yes. Huh? Yes. When your fellowship is right with him, you can have right fellowship with everybody. If yeah. it's tweet. Any area that's tweaked, it's not about you and someone else. It's about you and God. People don't want to make it that way. People don't want to make it that way. There's people sitting in their homes all across San Diego right now that have been offended by, by churches and by Christian people. They're all probably, I would venture to say, 100,000 plus. And they want to blame it on people. No, their problem is with God. Oh, they would say, they would protest. Oh, my problem is not with God. Oh, yes, it is. Because when you're in fellowship with Him and you're receiving love from Him and you're walking with Him, there's an abundant supply of rich love that you'll be crucified for people. Nobody can do you no wrong anymore. Uh -uh. You now have taken and been in this glory from heaven and been empowered to be the servant of all, to be a foot washer. I'm telling you right now, you don't need anymore. You're a supplier, not a needer. That's what happens. That's why that's that, it's, it, sets, it sets the entire balance upside down on its head. Oh, come on, people. Just getting in this realm and you become wide open. This is where you become receptive. This yeah. is where you become yielded. This is where things become fixed. This is where yeah. things become in order Good. in your life. This Good. is where you kept. Thank you, Lord. Mom and I are sitting around right now. We've been through every possible thing that Satan could throw at us for 32 years, coming on 33. A target that Satan could take it out because Papa put a message in my mouth that very few people in the United States of America was preaching when I started ministering on being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, a new creation. Old things passed away, no power of sin left, the divine nature being the nature that we had. And of course, when you're preaching something like this, Satan wants to take you out to disqualify the message. But we let Christ Jesus keep us. Yes. What, is the re what is the result of obedience? That we get to see our children married. I have our grandchildren. 
We get to see a family that loves being together. Yes. Huh, that loves hanging out together. That loves flowing and the anointing together. All that could have been, in any time along the way, been messed, messed up and destroyed by sin and rebellion and disobedience. The God preserving and keeping. Amen. And we're willing to participate with what it, And do it His way. Yes. And do it His way. Yes. And there were challenges. There was time I said to I had to I said to Ann, quiet and say another word. And she obeyed me. Because she wasn't still talking right. And had she not, had she just come back at me and made an argument of it, there would have been no order. It would have violated the order. And the repercussions would have been, there'd have been fall out of it. But it wasn't about my preference, my human preference. Now, there were times that there, there were things that went on that were my human preference. But in that particular instance, it was my human preference. It was, look, we've got to lay hold on this thing. This is what God has ordered. This is what he's demanded. But even out of my own human preference, she still committed it to the Lord. She's a holy woman of God. She walks in the things of the Spirit. A model of what it means, you know, to... It would be a meek and a quiet spirit, which is a great price in the eyes of the Lord. And that's not just for women, it's for men too. To do what's right, to be under authority. Just, you just wait. Do you see what Father has to say about her? When Father, when Father is pouring out praise. Amen. But reality of it is, is you and I can already have insight to that because we read the Word of God. And we recognize, who's walking like this? Who's walking in modest apparel? Who walks with simplicity and sincerity? Who's walking in these things that God describes that are important? Because reality of it is we don't make them important. We might not even notice. You notice how many, uh, all of a sudden, if you buy a Toyota, how many Toyotas are on the road? Because that thing's become important to you. You buy some special car. Okay, I bought a Ram truck, right? Suddenly there's Ram trucks right, left and center. I never noticed them before because they were not meaningful. Huh? You buy a Lexus, suddenly everybody's got a Lexus. Where did all these Lexus come from? It wasn't even meaningful, meaningful to you. You didn't notice. Same things about the things of the Spirit. Until it's yours. That's mine. I want Amen. that. I now yes. have that. Yes. I went and bought that. Yes. Yes. That's mine. Isn't this look good? Isn't this kindness look good? Yes. Isn't this humility? This is an amazing model of humility. This is the God model of humility. It's the super booster humility. <laughs> Whatever, you know. It's got all the latest and greatest things on it. It's fully loaded love. on and on, you know, Father's goodness to us. Yes. Having begun in the Spirit, I'm perfected by the Holy Ghost. Come on. I'm kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. I'm ready. Yes. Amen. Come on, think of that. You know, the times to really shout about that is when everything's coming at you right, left, and center, and you know, just trying to say, you know, it's going to be a disaster. It's not working out. What's wrong with me, and why don't I have it? I pull out the sword of the Spirit and kill that stuff. Yes. Amen. Why can't I have it? What are you talking about? I have fellowship with Him. Amen. You know, I was pouring out my complaint to the Lord and just, you know, recently saying, Lord, what, what's, what's up here about me doing greater works? When it doesn't seem like I'm doing the works. I want to move in a greater effectiveness of spirit knowledge and spirit authority. And I'm wrestling with it. I'm, you know, I'm going after it. What's up? Show me. Reveal. I can't see unless you show me. I can't see. It's not, I'm not blaming him. But I'm saying you have the charge of revelation, Lord, and the insight. Show me. And, you know, it always will come out that he's been showing you. It's you not been listening. Okay, but at any rate, you know, in the midst of that, in the midst of that, you know, he, he, 
in the midst of that, he reminds us of how much he loves us. Yeah. It's, it kills me every time. <laughs> he reminds us of how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. He asks us about whether or not we're enjoying the fellowship. Yeah. And it's like, wow, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? This yeah. fellowship is amazing, Father. Yeah. Yes. If I didn't have the fellowship, if I didn't have the communion, there's no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way. I would faint. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could go on. If I didn't have the encounters. Mm -hmm. I pray that you grab a hold of every one of those things that Father has revealed in his word where he describes what he's done for you without any help on your part. <laughs> and how... Now all he's just looking for you and I to do is to believe him. Amen. To agree with him. Amen. It's like the man, the nobleman comes to Jesus. And he's, you know, he's a royal official. That's what a nobleman is. Royal official comes to Jesus. He said, you must come down with me. Day's journey back to Capernaum from Cana. You must come down with me. Jesus looks at him and says, get out of here. Your son will live. And it's an imperative. Get out of here. Go. Get out of here. And the man's just arrested by what God says. You get out of here. It's done. Huh? Quit coming with that complaint and that issue. Get out of here. It's done. Huh? Move on with the program. Huh? Quit coming at, quit, quit coming at me with this thing and that problem, that, this problem, that problem. Get out of here. It's done for you. <laughs> your, your problem is cured. Your dead situation is made whole. He's a life giver. He's the redeemer. Amen. Hey, if God's spirit, if Father did not spare his own son, but offered him up. Can you just get this? God spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all. How shall he not also by him freely give us all things? Thank you, Lord. So that we hear him say, as a high priest who labors and ministers on our behalf to secure our acceptance before God the Father, that's who he is in Hebrews. That Hebrews chapter 7, I believe it's verse 24, might be 23, I mess up sometimes on those verses. He is able to save us to the uttermost who comes to the Father, by Jesus, seeing as that he forever lives to pray for us, to take up our part, to help us, to say, I got them. I'm going to convince them that they can do this. I know they're blowing it right now, but watch. Huh? I'm going to dig around this thing. He's able to... Utterly, utterly, who can defeat him? You put your trust in the Father and you will never be disappointed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The only way that you can possibly miss out is that you listen to lying, deception, wor deceptive words of Satan and you buy into something that God has said is wrong. If you do it, the wages of it is death. You buy into a wrong attitude, of wrong, you allow some wrong spirit, some wrong thinking, some wrong behavior to rule you and you're not willing to get right with God. You're not willing to repent. You're not willing to say, oh God, help me to cry out no matter where you're at. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my weakness. Lord, help this area of deception. I keep falling into it. Father, give me wisdom. Understand. You labor, you press in. Amen. Wherever you're at Thank you, Lord. for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Thank you, Jesus. The divine power that has been given to us yes. to live free from sin. Amen. Amen. To live as weapons of righteousness. Yes. Yes. Walking the power the, yes. of God and the divine nature. Now unto Him. Amen. Now unto Him. Amen. Who is able yes. to keep you from falling. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it goes right in, right in line with what Peter said when he said, if you'll pay attention, 
to this work of the Holy Spirit who's developing and cultivating in our life the maturity of all the nature of God as he describes those things of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1. He said, you will not stumble, Amen. but an entrance into the realms of the everlasting kingdom of the dear son shall be ministered to you. God, the Holy Spirit says, now let me show you now how to move into gift of faith. Now let me show you how to hear knowledge. Now let me show you how this works. Now let me show you how to work this particular miracle. This particular miracle, you're going to spit in the dirt and you're going to make a little mud cake. Huh? Mud pie. And you're going to stick it in the eyes of the man. And you're going to tell him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Spirit knowledge. Spirit knowledge. Oh, when you get there, there's going to be a bunch of mourners and weepers and criers. Get them all out. Just tell them all to leave. And don't take anyone with you. Don't take anyone with you. Except for Peter, James, and John. Don't let them go. Spirit knowledge. This is how the miracle is going to work. And this is what you're going to say. Just one word. Just one word was uttered. Just one word. Somebody said, well, why did Jesus only go to one man at the pool of Bethesda? Because that's what it, spirit knowledge. Spirit knowledge. He went to that one man. You didn't hear the rest of the story. Everybody else got healed. <laughs> I mean, one, the one example of faith, this one thirty-eight. year you know, guy, this one guy afflicted for 38 years that everybody just looked at this poor guy. He's pathetic. Nobody wants anything to do with him. He's got no man. Nobody's going to help him. He's pathetic. God cured the most pathetic, rejected condition of the one who no one would help. Are you with me? Yes. And, and then everybody's like, wow, if the pathetic guy can get cured, <laughs> they all got healed. They all got healed. You'll find out in heaven. Everybody got healed. People always try to flip that thing around. See, Jesus only healed one person because of the other. All this will of God. No! It was the key to everybody being liberated in that place. It no longer existed after that day. It was done. It was for... By that time, anyways, it was not even an angel coming down. If the angel did come down, he didn't come down after that. Because Jesus had come. No angel going to interrupt the ministry of Jesus. Give me a break. Get your theology right. Everybody stand with me before I keep you all day. Well, I'm stirring faith. I'm breaking strongholds. I'm dealing with wrong thinking, wrong attitudes, wrong behaviors, things that have afflicted you and tormented you. The evil spirits that have ruled over your heart and your mind. Wrong thinking that has ruled over your heart and your mind. Start looking at who God is. Forget about men. Look at who God is. Look at what God has done. You turn yourself over to Him and watch what He will begin to produce within you. Every other power will have no effect or influence on you ever again. When all of a sudden, what He says is all that's important. The only problem you're dealing with is you've made other things important to you. Other people's opinions are important to you. What is man's opinion? What have they done with their opinion? Why has it been valued so? Why has it been placed on such a high position? It's crazy, isn't it? Put God's word above all. Opinion. Amen. Place what he says is supreme. Well, I'm going to make what somebody said in a history book more important than what God said in his Bible. What somebody said in a science book more important than what God said in his Bible. Huh? What somebody said in a, you know, a comic book more important than what God said in his Bible. Father, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bold style. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you release us from our past so that we can step into our future in you. Father, you release us from defeat, oh God, that we can begin to live empowered by your Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you've given to us, Father, that we may know you and explore all the wonderful realms of divine glory to really explore life and grab a hold of riches. To really have a savings account and a spending account that has no bottom, no end. Because I'd quit laboring for the meat that perishes. And I laid hold on eternal life. I laid hold on this wonderful thing that God has given to me by your spirit. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every one of you, I just I ask you to lift your hands towards heaven. Those of you that are watching me by web right now, be released right now from those wrong realms of thinking. You be released right now from that doubt and unbelief. You be released right now from that condemnation and shame and guilt. You be released right now. You start believing what God says. Don't exalt your opinion above the Word of God. Don't exalt your experiences above what God said is yours. Start agreeing with Him. And watch what faith will do. In that self-same hour the next day, that nobleman was met by his servants and he discovered that at the very moment that Christ Jesus spoke, at that very moment, his son was made whole again. At the very moment that Christ Jesus spoke to you, when you heard his word, at that very moment, it happened. And Father wants you to discover it. Right now, if there's anybody in this place, are you watching me by the web? If you're not certain that you're right with God, God wants you to be certain. If you're not certain that His blood is powerful enough to wash away every stain of sin, God wants to show you that it's true. If it's never been revealed to you that His name is above every name and that the power of His name, everything in hell and heaven and earth has to obey, God wants to reveal it to you. Today, God wants to work a miracle for you. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is lift up your voice. And right now, in the name of Jesus, everything that would stand in your way, every demon spirit, every lying power of man and of darkness, of devils, I break the power of it. I loose you right now. I release you from whatever thing you've been in, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So that you can move into what God has provided for you through His only begotten Son, Jesus. From this day forward, you grab a hold of this life in God, this faith in Christ Jesus. And begin to enjoy it and let it grow and let it mature. And let all the blessings of God that has been supplied to you spiritually, physically, materially flow to you. Just flow to you. Ha ha, ha ha, hallelujah, ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, right now we pray for everybody who needs a miracle in their body. Lord, you see how many people have been overwhelmed with doubt and unbelief and discouragement. How many people have looked to other things as their source. But Father, we pray that you will find in this place and those that are listening right now by the web or by YouTube of people whose hearts are set upon the cure that only you can supply. The miracle of God that you have promised that you cannot lie. And they'll lay hold of it and they'll know that it is theirs and they'll receive, oh God, that which you have given. And Father, be more radical about your healing power, about your miracle working power than ever before in their life. That nothing of experience will be able to change or alter what your word has described. 
Father, and those that are in this place that have not understood how easy it is to flow in these utterances of praise called prophecy and tongues and interpretation of tongues that this day it will begin to be a breakthrough. That songs and hymns and spiritual songs of God will begin to be uttered forth from their life, oh God, that everyone will have a tongue and a revelation that everyone will prophesy one by one that the excitement and the ecstasy that comes in relationship with thee, oh God, will begin to explode in all of your people. Oh God, that there, there would become a flood, as it were, of your presence. A flood, Sutarahada. A flood, Suterahia. A flood, Broma Mahadaha. A flood of glory out of our innermost beings that become like a great sea that covers the earth. The water that covers the earth. Mon d'ombre de. Mon d'ombre sita. Ha 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 ha. Oh, lift your hands and praise him. Oh, lift your hands. Oh, lift your Oh, poco romana. Lift your hands and praise him. Shout to the Lord, Masikaya. Shout to the Lord for all that he's done, for the goodness that he has given, for the work of grace that has been supplied. Shout to the Lord. Father, I thank you that faith works. Faith begins to work. Yes, faith begins to work. Faith begins to work right now. Faith begins to work right now. Faith! Faith! Increase. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And Luke 21, 17, it says, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not a hair on your head perish, and your patience possesses ye souls. <laughs> Guys, there's a boldness here. There's a gift of boldness that God has given every single person in this church to step out <laughs> and not allow fear, not worrying about a hair on your head shall perish, but you shall go forth. You shall go forth. <laughs> <laughs> and possess this land in San Diego. Possess oh, this nation. Go. Possess the nations of the world. He busted a boat. He got a bus in a boat last night. Elizabeth and I were together, and this girl asked the name of my son, and I just said, John Samuel. She said, wow, that's strong and biblical. And I said, the Lord gave me his name. And there was a prophecy in my church that told me that I was going to conceive this. And her eyes were bigger than saucers, and she goes, I've lived in Scripps Ranch for 10 years, and I've never heard of your church. And I said, give me your number right now. You will be in my church tomorrow, and I'm praying she will be in here tonight with her entire family. But it just got so in my, in my bones of, why has she been in Scripps Ranch and never been in my my church why has she not heard this and it's such an urgency in my heart that we go out and I know a lot of you guys are going on the streets but God even says up here he says about not meditating on what you're gonna say right before it it says settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer for I'll give you a mouth and wisdom yeah which all your adversaries shall not gain say nor resist guys he will give us the wisdom he will give us the words to speak as we step out as we invite as we get phone numbers he will give us those words he will say that lady needed to hear about prophecy she needed to hear about the goodness of the Lord she's 42 and just had a baby right before me I said our kids are gonna grow up as saints and lights our kids are gonna grow up here do in the works of God and you guys we need to do this there is we talk about it all the time but we need to get out we need to trust in the Lord that people like Francine are sitting around waiting to be invited in here waiting to walk in the prophecy walking into the gifts that the Lord has given us so today let's grab a hold of this let's grab a hold father I thank you there's a greater urgency in this church father that we will walk out that we will walk out the things you called us to do Lord Jesus thank you Lord for greater signs wonders and wisdom thank you Lord that Francine and her family yeah. will be in this church tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord.
I want you just to lift your hands towards heaven now and just receive. Lift your hands towards heaven right now and just receive. God, the Holy Ghost is touching you right at the point of your need right now. Those of you who have been in doubt and unbelief, God is filling you right now with faith and confidence. Those of you who have had uncertainty, God is filling you with faith and confidence. Those of you who have wavered and it seems like have been tossed back and forth from one opinion to the other, God right now is establishing you. I'm telling you, things will not be as they have been in the past. But I know that the Spirit of the Lord will give to each and every one of you right now as it were the pen of a ready writer. A person who's ready, prepared to take dictation from heaven, ready to write it out and speak it out. Hallelujah. Those of you who have been under the dominion of fear and fear has been able to intimidate you and stop you and sway your opinions you know the lord spoke to me and i heard that i heard this in the spirit that there have been those who've gone out into the street and and that they've gone from door to door and they allowed the enemy to speak fear to them about a certain house and it was that house that god was going to bring salvation to and father wants to reverse that now and cause you to walk in spirit knowledge and recognize that you don't let fear and intimidation ever influence you. If it's fear and intimidation, you want to go ahead and do exactly what the fear and intimidation is telling you not to do. If you can't get it the right way, get it the wrong way. In other words, if you can't get instruction from heaven the right way by divine insight, God's saying go to that house, you can get it the wrong way by fear and intimidation coming at you and saying don't go to that house. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Father is going to reward you. There are things that you've been waiting for that God is going to supply them as you obey, obey Him and you go and do those things which He has said in the proclamation of the gospel, not in a way that many people have described it, described, but, described it, but in a way, a free way, of, a, a way of authority, a way of life, a way of splendor, <laughs> a way that's exciting, not dull and disinteresting, but one of power and authority. And there in the midst of that, you're going to watch God supply your need, and it can be, it can be, it can be in all kinds of areas. I mean, uh, you know, I'm going to say it this way. Uh, even a, a, a woman can find her husband there. <laughs> a, a, a man can find his wife there. Uh, a person who had, doesn't have a job can find their job there. I mean, it, I mean it, it, 